Hello, I'm Harrison Keeley. Here's a quick look at today's top stories. First of all, sacks of dead animals have been found dumped in mass pits behind an East Tennessee pet crematory. Now a state crew is using bulldozers to excavate scores of buried dogs and cats in Morgan County. The crews have already found several pits with about 30 animals in each, and they expect to find even more. Officials say the owner of Elliott Pet Services apparently dumped the animals instead of incinerating them as promised. A petition has blocked Chattanooga's new same-sex benefits ordinance. A local conservative group says it gathered more than 10,000 signatures on the petition. That's more than double the amount required. Mark West, who led the drive, says the overwhelming support shows that the majority of the public is against the ordinance. But Councilman Chris Anderson says he believes the signatures reflect a small group of residents, many of whom he claims were misled into signing. It was only two weeks ago that Chattanooga became the second major city in Tennessee to award benefits to domestic partners. But now the city council is forced to make a decision. Either they repeal the ordinance, or the question will be put to a referendum vote in the next primary election. Chairman Yusuf Hakim says he doesn't expect council members to vote any differently, so a public vote is likely in August. The son and brother of two Knoxville natives competing in the current season of Survivor has died in a car accident in Chattanooga. 25-year-old Taylor Lee Collins was a passenger in a car that hit a house on South Germantown Road. Collins was thrown from the vehicle and later died of his injuries at the hospital. He was the son of Survivor winner Tina Wesson, who was competing with her daughter Katie Collins in the current season. The driver in the wreck was also taken to the hospital, but had minor injuries. A police investigation is ongoing. A women's doctor in Jasper has pleaded guilty to 14 charges of illegally distributing pain pills. A two-year investigation claims Charles Michael Howe prescribed painkillers to people who were either no longer his patients or had never been his patients to begin with. Some were issued the pills in other people's names. Records show Howe distributed the pills to people in a parking lot and around his neighborhood. He now faces up to 30 years in prison and a fine of up to $1.5 million. Catoosa County says it won't loan any more money to Hutchison Medical Center. The Fort Oglethorpe Hospital had been seeking a critically needed $2 million loan, but commissioners turned it down. Walker County Commissioner B.B. High School said the hospital needed the money to make payroll. But Walker and Catoosa have already poured millions of dollars into Hutchison, with little to show for it. Now it's unclear what the future holds for the medical center, which is more than $60 million in debt. A Hutchison spokeswoman says a lender has stepped forward, but she declined to comment about what cuts, if any, are in the works. A new TV commercial from Dodge takes a dig at the Chattanooga-made Passat. Take a look. We're willing to bet. No kid ever grew up with a poster of a Passat on his bedroom wall. A Volkswagen spokesman says the automaker isn't taking any offense to the ad. Instead, they see it as free PR. Plus, the Passat isn't geared toward young people to begin with. But Volkswagen sales in the U.S. went down in November. Passat sales fell almost 16 percent, and Dodge Charger sales are up. The nation's oldest private clothing manufacturer has filed for bankruptcy. Hardwick Clothes in Cleveland is more than 130 years old. The company was forced to file for bankruptcy after a federal agency ordered that it replenish its retirement plan. But the owners insist the business remains viable. They say Hardwick will continue to operate while it reorganizes its finances and perhaps negotiates a sale or new investment in the company. Finally, a news story from our partners at WRCB. Raider Dome at Cleveland High School has been closed because of safety concerns. Cleveland officials say structural problems forced the school to abandon the gymnasium. Classes there have been relocated, and basketball home games will be moved to Cleveland Middle. 
A building analysis revealed that the gym would have to be evacuated if wind gusts reached 30 miles per hour or if two or more inches of rain was expected. Instead, school officials decided to close the 50-year-old gym until a solution can be found. Superintendent Martin Ringstaff says it's possible the structure may have to eventually be torn down and rebuilt. Turning to weather, today will be cloudy with a slight chance of rain and a high near 68 degrees. The low tonight will be around 60. That's today's newscast. Thanks for being with us. You can find more on these stories and breaking news all day long at timesfreepress.com.